What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fi here with my guy Goldie. We are going to be going through uh, through this NFL Week Nine, and we're going to be using a little bit of Goldie's projections, talking about Goldie's projections. It's a really nice feature that we have now uh, updated on the site for football, and it's you know basically an aggregate from the industry. From the industry, I'm going to call up my Saber Sim page, but Goldie, uh, glad to have me back with you. And yeah, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what you're what you're doing with your projections, and and that, that basically it's. It's sort of the the most uh, of anybody out there that I've seen anyway that uh, really aggregated in for you know the projections from all sites and really try to get a more accurate projection that way. Yeah, man. Um, what, so when I started playing DFS, uh, you know, I hadn't gotten into it enough um, to be able to build out my own models and projection models and anything like that. So um, when I started, I just subscribe to a couple of different sites back then and um and just grab their projections and and created uh an average and over time um i just kind of personally with my own stuff built out my own models and um you know with pulling in data and everything and then just added more and more projection sites to it and really with the uh that the the more projections that you the more projection averages right that you've you've got going into one sort of overall number um kind of how the law of large numbers works uh that means the overall projection is going to be more accurate right so um my personal models i've just been throwing in as many different projection systems as possible and and then making my my own sort of tweaks to it um, based on historical accuracy and, and things like that. And sheets does something similar. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, we've just, uh, we we're trying to build that out here at the site for, um, for all of you know, every sport that we can do it for, um, ton of sites are offering projections now for, for pretty much every DFS sport that you can play. So, um, and certainly now with NFL and, and NBA, you know, the majors, uh, everybody brings those in. So that's uh, that's kind of what we're doing behind the scenes, um, adding in as many systems as we can, just trying to get a, a pretty good idea as to where the industry is and where most of the market is. And okay. when we take a look at that stuff, um, you know, with sort of an overhead view, then we should be able to make some pretty sound decisions Um uh, you know, with our, with our own DFS play. So, um, yeah. that's what we're bringing to the site. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to, to rolling it out kind of, uh, for every sport, um, you know, as soon as possible for everybody. Yeah, that's great, man. I appreciate it very much. I think it's a great, a great thing to have. And I'm, I'm really glad to, that, that, uh, that you're, you've been doing that. I think it's going to be really helpful. And I hope that people do take advantage of the only place that has this stuff aggregated in the industry and join us. And if anybody needs from this video, a uh, link to the discord, uh, any information on the site, just please hit us up. Um, and with that said, uh, and like, and subscribe and all that stuff, um, let's get into the game by game here and talk about some things. Um, we'll try to keep it a little bit quicker than we did last time, but um, I still think that, uh, you know, we, we have plenty of time. So this is an interesting one because I think that you're going to have, you know, you've, you've got Carolina's defense overall this year has been good. Um, I don't really want to play anything, you know, I'm not like excited about playing anything from Carolina. I think DJ Moore is at his price is completely viable and Foreman is completely viable. Um, but do I want, is this the, is, I always say you have to have a couple of, of Bengals hammer stacks, uh, ready just because there's always that 450 yard game coming from Joe Burrow at some point without chase here. I, I think this is definitely one of the teams I'm, I'm targeting, but it's, um, you know, Hurst, Higgins, Boyd, uh, probably wouldn't use Mike Thomas. And then Joe Mixon are all interesting. And I don't mind the foreman or, or more run back, but this is not my favorite game. It's just one that I think has a chance to, to get going. What do you, where do you stand here? Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Um, I thought, uh, you know, especially on Cincinnati, I think you've you've got to have exposure to that offense pretty much every week, um, because they they can go off for I mean shit Bur Burrow through for five hundred one week right so um, now with Jamar Chase out it does uh, significantly affect the upside obviously but um, as of now we're seeing some pretty depressed ownership on that offense so I think the market is kind of low on the Bengals as well. And I think that's usually a pretty damn good time to jump on board. Um, T Higgins price has come up a little bit. He's 73 now, but I still don't think the upside uh, is, is fully priced in. Uh, mm -hmm. We're seeing him 
ownership, give or take right now. Same thing with Tyler Boyd. Um, he's at 6,300. I, the, the upside for him is definitely not priced in mm -hmm. and Joe Burrow right there at 66. I, it, he's at whatever we got him at, at 6%. So, um, I think it's a really, really strong play to get to some bangles here. I think this would be one of the stacks since I'm also not crazy about Carolina that you could just run without a run back. Um, I don't think you have to chase Deontay Foreman from last week. I do think it's okay to play some uh, DJ Moore on the other side. I'm not super wild about it because Carolina's offense just kind of stinks. Um, I, and I overall, I don't expect this game to be super high scoring um, just because Carolina, they're, they're probably going to have a, a tough time keeping up with Cincinnati in general. Um, so I'm kind of with you. Not my favorite game either, but uh, I would prefer to just get to some Bengals. I think you can play some Joe Mixon too. I'm not wild about the ownership coming in on him at about 20, 22% right now. I think that's probably a little high because there's a, a bunch of different guys in the, in the low 6K, upper 5K range for running backs that we can play this week. So um, not super heavy on the Bengals. I think you can play a Hayden Hurst too at 3,600. There's going to be a bunch of tight end plays that we'll get to. Yeah, right in the same price range, right? Exactly. So but, yeah. um, I, I do like the Bengals defense though. They're expensive, but um, I, I think it's it's playable to, to get to some expensive defenses this week. So yeah, yeah I'm kind of with definitely. you there. I, I I in general try not to play the the pay up for defense, but I think this is the week where you can you can possibly justify it. Um, just real quickly, why why is it that that no one is going to be? I mean, it's just we have too many running backs in the same price here. I don't think it's necessarily all that much of a chase. I happen to like Foreman a lot. I think he's really good. Um, he's a big big back, and we just saw. I mean, we just saw Cincinnati get run all over on on what was it was it last Monday or Thursday? I can't even remember. Uh, Monday night, yeah, yeah, Monday. Um, they, they you know they got kind of run all over. Is it 6K? Is I don't know. I don't mind that as a run back. It's the only thing I, we, we disagree on. Is I don't mind the Deontay Foreman or or more as a run back. Again, I don't expect them to score a ton of points, but I, I think that the total is a little bit low for them here. I think that there's a, you know, they scored 35 last week in or 34 should have been 35 and won the game in Atlanta. Um, I could see, I could see that, I could see them, you know, potentially being able to put up some fantasy points, if not, uh, you, you know, stay in the game in a really competitive situation. I don't think that's very likely, but I, I do think they can put up some fantasy points. So, Let's move on to a couple of really cheap quarterbacks in a game that I think could could be a little bit, you know, yeah. I don't know if I want to say sneaky because you're going to have a ton of ownership on the running backs here, but maybe playing the passing game here might be a way to get off of some of the chalky running backs in a game environment we kind of like. Um, uh, Chris Kirk at, at, at 5,500, uh, Devontae Adams at 81. I, I think it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, idea to possibly do that. And then uh, I think that Evan Ingram at 3,300 is another one of those tight ends. So I kind of like this game. It's not my fa my absolute favorite, but it is one I could I will definitely have some game stacks of. Where do you stand with it? Yeah, 100 percent on board there. Uh, I think uh, I think this game could win the slate this weekend. Um, mm -hmm. But it'd be kind of weird because uh, both defenses are are kind of okay. Yeah, and and both offenses are are kind of mediocre. But um, you know that said that that generally is a pretty decent recipe for some fireworks. Um, and especially with Vegas coming off uh, a really, really poor performance, getting blown out in new Orleans and Jacksonville's really kind of been struggling over the last several weeks too. Uh, but I'm with you. These guys are cheap and the only ownership coming to anybody in this game is coming to the running backs, both of whom I think are, are probably overpriced. Um, ETN, eh, maybe not at 63, but uh, I'm, I'm not totally sure about the workload just yet. Uh, I don't think they're going to, uh, or they're quite ready to use him how they were using um, James Robinson. Right. I could be wrong about that, but like that's definitely coming. I'm just not sure he's there quite yet. And on the other side, Josh Jacobs at 7,300, he's definitely been getting the workload, um, but at 20% ownership and a really, really elevated price to where we've been paying for him uh, in the last several weeks, you know, down in the mid to upper five Ks. Uh, I kind of balk at that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, not that he's a bad play at all, uh, but I would prefer to, you know, just get to a little bit cheaper uh, for far less ownership across the board. Uh, but I'm with you. I really, really like the passing game here. That's both of these teams real weakness, uh, certainly Vegas. So um, I, I really like getting to Trev and Christian Kirk stacks. I love Evan Ingram as well at 3,300. Um, 
And I think you can play Devontae. Uh, you can play Devontae every week. But uh, I think it's a really nice bounce spot for him. I think he had, what, one or two catches last week or something. Um, so, like, the Vegas offense has been really kind of disappointing. And I think this is a, a sneaky spot for them to to bounce pretty hard after getting – uh, blown out last week. So um, mm-hmm. I'm with you. I, I'd probably stay off of Darren Waller. I just don't think they use him <laughs> enough for whatever freaking reason. And I'm also not convinced he's healthy. Um, same thing with Hunter Renfro. Like it, it, he just hasn't been getting the work enough and his price is still a little elevated for, uh, you know, for the workload that he's been getting. So my favorite would be Devonte for, um, for the Raiders. I think you can run it with a, a skinny kind of, car stack or maybe run it back with an etn um mm-hmm. or run it back with a christian kirk or even a zay jones um and then on the other side i'm a little bit more enthused about heavier stacks uh with trev kirk zay jones you know or mixing in evan ingram or even etn there and then mm-hmm. running it back with Devonte. i think that's probably the best way to play the game um but i like i like a bunch of spots here Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's I mean, there's a lot of a lot of games that are kind of interesting for fantasy on this slate. Not not a lot of great real football games, but yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of good fantasy ones. And I think this is definitely one that could be their little Zay Jones revenge action. Why not? Yeah, uh, right. Uh, one more quick thing to note: um, yeah. this total has been getting bet up. It's it's up two or three points yeah. off of the open, um, and it's it's sneaky. There's a, a few totals at 49, I think, this week, but this one is. Uh, I guess the the second tier below them, but it's at 48. Okay. So not a huge difference, but it, it has been seeing money to the overall week. So something to keep in mind. Yep, absolutely. Um, all right, let's move over to Indy and, and uh, New England over here. And this is going to be probably the, uh, I, 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 I don't want to do anything really with these receivers. I think it's okay to play Jacoby Myers. Um maybe taking a shot on Taekwon Thornton again, um, I, I guess. Uh, but the main thing is I, I do like uh, Ramondre Stevenson quite a bit here. And I'm deciding what I want to do with, we, we do have no, you know, no Jonathan Taylor this week. Um, it's kind of interesting to think about what they're going to do. I guess it, it, is it going to be just Dion Jackson? I mean, that's, I, I mean, I right guess, now, but... yeah, yeah, I guess, right. They, well, they can't run the football anyway. They've got one of the worst rush offenses in, in the NFL for some reason. Yeah, um, so yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, I think I don't want to play these guys. I just was sort of throwing out what, what, what they could do. I mean, if yeah, exactly. Reason, Lindsay was healthy. That might be interesting, you know, at 4k, but I don't think that's even going to happen. So sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Rudy. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm up with you. Uh, I, I don't really like much of anything in this game offensively. Um, I mean, Mac Jones, he's been terrible the last couple of weeks and I I don't really want to get to anything from new England's offense. Um, Maybe some Ramondre pieces. I think he's coming in about 20% give or take right now. And I think he's like, he's another one of those guys in the, in the six K range running back wise that you can, like that you can play he's it's a fine play uh you can also fade and and go elsewhere i i don't think it's like a smash spot for him mm-hmm. because the colts defense like they would have lost like 14 games by now if if they were worse on defense you know, you know what i mean because their right. offense has been so bad um so really my favorite pieces of this game would be uh new england's defense i don't really want anything to do with the colts kind of top to bottom um Mm-hmm. with with ellinger there I, i'm just not i'm just not doing it and uh and very very short uh jacoby myers pieces i'm just not really convinced that the pass game is uh, really has all that much upside for new england so uh really very little exposure to this game for me yeah i think it's mostly stevenson for me and that's pretty much it but again like you said, that we we get all these twenty percent guys, and then they're going to have some some completely unowned guys in the same price you know price range. One of them I mentioned already in Foreman, but uh, you'll see how many running backs there are that are completely viable. Um, and here's another one in this next game. Uh, so this passing offense for for Miami has been absolutely incredible. Uh, Chicago's defense w- got beat up pretty bad last week. Uh, I, I think I could, I could, like, this is another one of those teams, right? The Dolphins, you kind of want to do the double stack with Waddle and, and Hill and, and to going with Tua, like, 
you don't you want to get some of that in every week. You know, I won everything last week as, along with a couple. There was a couple other pairings that were good, but that was a I mean, I, I just a, a dynamite one. And then you've got the uh, the two running backs here in in Mostert and Montgomery that I think are are playable. I would probably not play Montgomery to be honest. I think I still like Herbert, you know, just as much um, as a runner as an actual runner. So I I, I like Mostert a little bit here. Uh, they're not going to, I don't think that Jeff Wilson's going to be active for this game, or I'm not sure yet if he's going to be. So uh, that would be speaking a little bit more, even on the, the most dirt thing, but I don't, I don't, it's not like I absolutely love it. So I'm more interested in the Miami passing game stack and potentially uh, I mean, Justin Fields is becoming more and more fantasy viable every week, but I could definitely see myself playing Darnell Mooney at 4,700. He's, he's got the talent level to be able to, to, to break, you know, a big game at, at that price. So I, I think that that's kind of interesting. I, I don't think I'm going to go with Fields this week, but I don't. I don't think that he should be written off either. Like if I was scripting 150, he would probably end up in five percent of them. I'd say. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with you there. Um, like Fields is going to pop eventually, man. And this kid is super, super talented. He's just unfortunately he plays for the Bears, and and their offense is just awful. Um, they don't throw the ball enough, so it really caps his upside. And the offensive line is terrible. He just takes way too many sacks. So uh, his upside is at least for now capped, I think, um, even at 5,300, I had like, I'd rather just go to Trev at 52. Right. Um, but I like a hundred percent. You're, you're exactly right. He's going to pop eventually. And who is he going to be with? Well, it's going to be with Darnell Mooney. Right. Um, he's really the only pass catcher there. They don't use Cole Komet all that much. Um, and EQ St. Brown, he gets like two targets a game or something like that. So uh, eventually it's going to come. I do think, you know, when I, when I was going through the game early this week, um, I thought you could get to Miami again, because I agree with you. I think having some Tua, Tyreek and Waddle exposure, even if, and even some Gesicki mm -hmm. is, is pretty warranted every week, um, especially against bad teams. You know, the, the bears are, they're going to lose, 19 games this year, whatever the hell it is. And I think the dolphins, you know, if it weren't for the, the bills, um, you know, they'd be running away with that division. Right. So um, this is a good team over here and very, very explosive offense with a kind of a suspect defense as well. So that said, I think it could be a super, super deep tournament spot for uh, Darnell Mooney. Um, I would also stay off of the running backs from Chicago, but I really do like Raheem Mostert. Uh, I think he's going to get a lot of work this week, and yeah. that's really how you've been uh, been able to to beat the Bears uh, pretty consistently this year is is on the ground. So um, I I really do like Mostert. Uh, he's probably my favorite of the the six K running backs. Ooh. Um, even though he is seeing, you know, the whatever. 20% ownership as well. Um, you think he's going to be that owned? Oh, I've I, actually, I, I've I, got, I, him, I, I've got him a half that now. Oh, uh, yeah. He was, yeah, he was coming in earlier in the week. Yeah. At, uh, really, really popular. So I guess some, you know, the rest of the, the market is, is kind of steaming a little bit. And now that he's under 10%, uh, I like that even more. So um, not going to project nearly as high because the Miami offense uh, just hasn't really performed on the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. nearly to the extent they have through the air. But um, I think it's a really, really good piece and probably my favorite, even though the, the passing game clearly has more upside. But uh, everybody's here is going to be uh, sub 10 percent. Um, Tyreek is, you know, you'll you'll see ownership on him at 15 percent or whatever. He's just kind of in that zone now. Mm -hmm. um, but Waddle and Gesicki, you're going to get them 5 percent each. So uh, I think those are pretty good plays and and they can they can win tournaments for you. So um, if you want to run it back, uh, it would probably be with Mooney for me. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think I, I similar to Cincinnati. I don't think you have to run it back with Miami here. Yeah. I think it's a pretty similar situation game and everything. Yep. Um, all right. Let's talk about uh, the, uh, the Minnesota and, and Washington whose defense has been pretty good. Uh, this is one I'm probably going to avoid. I think Thielen is definitely playable. Jefferson's really expensive, but obviously always a, a you know a guy who could break the slate. Um, and then I can't I can't really get to anything. I I think it's we're getting that you know it's getting closer to we can play Terry McLaurin, but I, I don't necessarily want to here. Yeah. Um, the running back splits haven't been anything so you know that I want to do anything with. 
Uh, we haven't seen the the huge Cook games, but I think that, you know, look, if you wanted to get a little contrarian, I'm okay with it. But for the most part, this is a game I'm, I'm pretty much off for DFS. How about you? Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Um, I, I do think that like a Taylor Heineke and Terry McLaurin stack is going to blow up eventually. Um, and it like, I, I don't know why they don't throw him the ball, man. It, it's just so, <laughs> it, it's so tilting, but um, you know, they, they still have pass catchers here with, with Curtis Samuel uh, and, and McLaurin there. And Heineke is, he's like, he's not bad. You know what I mean? He doesn't have a ton of upside, but uh, he's not bad. Um, he can manage games and every once in a while he'll be like, like the, um, like Jared Goff of of the old days, which is kind of manage games, you know, and and plot along. And every once in a while, he'll pop for a thirty five, and you just got to have him. So, um, yeah. I think that I think Heineke has that in him, but this week I'm I'm kind of with you as well. Um, this could very well be one of the games that a lot of people are ignoring, but two kind of, I would say, average defenses here, um, and two offenses that really have some playmakers that could explode. So I wouldn't totally write it off, um, but it would have to be some super deep tournament teams for me as well. Uh, favorites on Washington would just be McLaurin. I'm not crazy about the price though. I think it needs to come down just a little bit more before we start getting excited. Uh, really don't want to deal with the backfield at all, uh, despite the super depressed ownership. And 5,200 for Curtis Samuel, though, is uh, is pretty intriguing. But I think Heineke at 54, I'd rather just get to some cheaper running backs. Um, on the Minnesota side for me, I obviously love Justin Jefferson pretty much every week. Uh, and now we're getting him sub 10%. Even at 8,600, I think that's very, very playable. Uh, mm-hmm. The offense runs through him now. It doesn't run through Dalvin Cook anymore. And yeah, that he's just going to get all of the target work. Um and that that's really what makes it kind of hard to play Adam Thielen, despite a a, a de- depressed price tag on him as well. But uh, I think you can run Minnesota stacks, uh, not jacked about 6,200 Kirk Cousins, but, um, you know, nobody's playing this offense. So it could vary, you know, they could put up 35 points in a hurry. Uh, I don't think it's bad. And I would run it back probably with McLaurin or Curtis Samuel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um just checking one thing out here. Uh, why is Madison not even showing up on the page here? Uh, let's see. Oh, there he is. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry, I was I just missed him for some reason. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's another reason why not to play Cook. But I, I you know, yep. one the one play from this game I'll probably be the most exposed to is Washington's defense at twenty four hundred just because the price. Sure. Um, I think you have a weird uh, possible shootout again over here. Uh, I like I, I like the idea of maybe look. I know he's been awful. There's a lot out there, but like, I don't know, put Rogers in a dome at low ownership and cheap as a, with a cheap stack. I, I I'll bite. I'll, I'll take, I, I will take a shot on let Lazard and, and or Dobbs with Rogers and run it back with St. Brown. I think we can't really do anything. This running game is so frustrating to try to play from Detroit. I, yep. I just, I just can't bring myself to do it. But I, I mean, look, if, if DeAndre Swift is out, I like Jamal Williams, at least as much as the other guys we've been talking about. I think he probably plays. But uh, I do think Jamal Williams is, is definitely interesting. I think Aaron Jones is going to be the highest owned player in this game. But uh, you know, again, just, just do you, he and uh, you have the che- you have he and Jacobs at the same price. Uh, I still always worry about Dylan, you know, snaking his touchdown or two. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm I'm interested in the passing side of this though. I, I do think a low owned Dobbs or Lazard uh, with Rodgers is kind of interesting to me and. I would include Tunyon in, into that mix of of tight ends. So I'm I'm okay with the with the game stack here. But the the problem is I'm the only guy I really like on Detroit is is Amon Ra. Um, so I uh, just just because the splitting you know the splitting carry situation with the running back. So Swift has almost become like the pass catching back, and Williams is the main back. It's just been hard hard to track. Uh, one of these days, Swift will break. You know, 6400 will be like, oh my god, we didn't play DeAndre Swift at 6400. This is not the week for me. Uh, but I do like the passing game on the on the Green Bay side, and I like the idea of running it back with St. Brown. Yeah, I think we might actually um, kind of disagree on a, a couple of points here. I really do like the the Detroit running game in this spot. Um, Who are you Green Bay, play? Yeah, well, that's that's the problem. No, yeah. You're right. Um, no, I I would prefer DeAndre Swift. Uh, of course, if he's out, I'm smashing Jamal Williams. Uh, I would probably have him. I mean, in like 80% of my teams, um, mm-hmm. 
the price would be way too low and the spot is just way too good. I'm with you. I think there's going to be points in this game. And I think the market is kind of um, caught on to that as well. Uh, we're going to see some ownership on Aaron Rodgers, about 10%. It's kind of elevated for a quarterback. Um, it's not terrible, but it, it's really just going to be him and Tunyon who are, are garnering most of the ownerships, showing Tunyon, uh, again, as one of those cheap tight ends at about uh, 12, 15%. So if I were going to just stack this game, um, and, and I do think it's warranted to attack the Detroit defense, um, I would do it with Rodgers, uh, Dobbs, and Lazard, because both of those guys are going to be pretty ignored. Um, I think their prices are a little bit elevated for their performance this year, but there's definitely still upside that isn't quite baked in. Yep. So I, I think that's very playable. Um and you're you're exactly right. I think Aaron Jones is going to be the the most popular guy in this game, unless Tunyon just steams somehow. Um, but it's it's super difficult to play these guys, similar to how it is to uh, or with with Detroit, right? They just split carries in the backfield, and um, you know both of them are good on third down. Both of them can catch a ball out of the backfield, you know. So it's uh, it's frustrating trying to pick. And at twenty percent ownership, I. I'd kind of just as soon fade both of them and, and hope it didn't burn me. Mm -hmm. um, I'd prefer to get to the passing at the green Bay passing game here. I like Dobbs a lot at 53. Mm -hmm. um, if Alan Lazard is back, I, that sort of tempers my enthusiasm on Dobbs a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, it looks like he's going to be fine. Uh, Lazard. So I, I like him as well. Like I said, I, I don't think all of the upside is baked in at that price. And before he went down, uh, he had emerged as the very clear number one uh, in Rogers' eyes. So um, yep. that kind of takes me off of Tunyon a little bit with Lazard back. So I think the 14, 15% ownership on him is probably a bit high mm -hmm. given the other cheap tight ends that we can get to this week. So um, that's probably how I am going to play it. It's going to be Rogers, Lazard, and and Dobbs. Um, and then may, probably just sprinkle in some Jones and, and A.J. Dillon probably no Sammy Watkins for me, even though I really do like the price at, uh, at 36, I think he could pop for a score or something, but you know, he's going to have to catch like three balls and all three of them are going to have to be touchdowns <laughs> to, to yeah. get there. I think. And, and if for any reason, Lazard ends up sitting, I think Sammy Watkins becomes obviously a much better play. Yep. For sure. Um, as does Tunyon. But, uh, but I just, well, yeah, I just, I just, I would just ca caution everybody. I'm a big swift fan. I mean, they haven't run it more than seven times since the first week of the season. Yep. And he's really like, it's not even getting split carries. He's getting less than 30% of the carries. Um, yeah. I think it's, yeah. I think he's suspiciously hurt still uh, with, that, with that ankle. So I think they're, they're really trying to go easy with him. Yep. Um, and they'll, they might just use him as kind of their, their pass catching swing back or something like that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. He first, I was frustrated with myself for, he was in my best lineup last week and I had some really good plays in there. And I just, well, why? I was like, why did I have to put Swift as the, as the guy in there? I just trying to get a little bit too cute, I think. Um, all right. Uh, Buffalo and the Jets, uh, not on this kind of a slate where there's so many running backs. Uh, what I would I consider Singletary at high of a priority. I also think they do try to get Naeem Hines a little bit into the mix. Uh, I thought that was a good pickup for them that sure. finally addressed the running game. Everybody keeps talking like they're going to beat the hell out of everybody. Well, running the ball, we know matters a lot more when it comes to the playoffs. And they're going to they're, they're gonna have to figure something else out because – I, they just rely so heavily on this awesome passing attack, but it's just, it feels like uh, at some point you're going to have to try and find a way to at least move the chains a little bit with the, with the ground game. Anyway, um, about this game in general, I, I really, I, I like, uh, I, I mean, look, you're, you're always good with a, with a Buffalo stack. It's always good by me. I'm always okay with you go Allen to Diggs and, or, or, and or Davis, and then you run it back on, in this case, it would be with Garrett Wilson, I think. So, uh, all of that sounds pretty good to me. And even separately, I think it's a tough matchup for Garrett Wilson. So uh, really, really hard, hard to pick on those Buffalo corners, but at the same time, the amount of attention he could see with, uh, especially with the, the, you know, Brees Hall being gone and them having to be down, you know, being down double digits, likely a lot of the game. I think that he's viable. And one of these days, Elijah Moore is going to do something. I'm not sure this is the day, but uh, I, that's the way I would put this game is basically just play an Allen Diggs or David and or Davis with Wilson, but I, I'm not going to, it's not one of my priority games. I do think that Wilson is, is suspiciously cheap for a guy with a ton of upside, but it's a tough matchup. Yeah, I agree. They're, they've Buffalo's activated uh Tredavious white as well. So mm -hmm. um, 
really, I, I don't want to go after them at all. They got probably the best defense in football and probably the best offense in football. So um, nothing from the Jets here for me. If it were going to be anybody, it would be Wilson. Um, but I'm I'm not touching it. I'm just going to stay away from it. If Garrett Wilson beats the the Bills and uh, with Zach Wilson throwing it to him, then uh, I'm just going to lose, I guess. Um, on the Buffalo side, I'm also not super crazy about getting to them this week. They're very, very expensive, and I don't think this is the best matchup. Uh, the Jets' defense is pretty good, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly in the run game, I don't want to touch Singletary. Uh, Jets' rush defense is excellent. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I think the Jets could actually, you know, if, if Zach Wilson weren't so bad, I think they could because of their defense, keep this game close. They're probably still going to get beat by like 30, but <laughs> um, you know, that said, I, it just kind of takes me off of Buffalo and full Buffalo smash stacks for me. Um, yeah, just, I, I like the jets. I think they're, they're a respectable defense over there. So at the, those price tags and elevated ownership that you're seeing on Josh Allen and Steph Diggs, um, and Gabe Davis as well. I'm, uh, I'm just not super crazy about it. Um, but that said, you know, the Buffalo is still far, far better than the Jets here, and they could just run over them. Uh, the Jets have beat some bad teams, and, you know, like Denver, for example, as, as I cry in the corner over here, um, you know. They're getting better. But, <laughs> they're, well, they're trying. Uh, you know, so Buffalo is, is probably the best team in football here. So, um that said, I think you could very well see them explode like the Chiefs often do uh, when they get a really, really bad team. So um, I wouldn't totally write it off, but uh, I would temper my exposures to them just because of the pricing and the elevated ownership. Yeah, and 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 I guess we get you know one one other thing I'm going to throw back in here is I think the best play from maybe maybe the Jets' best play is actually Conklin. <laughs> like yeah. Sure. Um, 3,200. I, I think Conklin and Knox are both really interesting this week as just adds to that slew of, of these three K ish tight ends that, that are in play. But, uh, but we've seen a ceiling from Conklin and we've seen a lot of targets for him this year and his price doesn't go up. And I, I think that he's a little bit, uh, he, I don't know, like a little bit better of a play maybe than he's getting credit for. And, uh, people aren't going to be on him. He had 10 targets last week. He had six catches and two touchdowns. Uh, he had a lot of targets to start the season as well. He's had a, a seven, nine, eight, five, six, ten uh, target games. I think that this could be a good spot for him, uh, especially with the uh, with Brees Hall uh, being out. I, I think that he might be a guy who actually benefits. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, and keep in mind, like Zach Wilson is awful. He can't throw the football down the field, uh, so he could very well uh, Conklin that is see some elevated target share. Yep. Um, as they try and sort of rein him in Wilson threw three horrific picks last week. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's not going to be lost on the coaching staff. They're going to try and, you know, if they do have a chance to win this game or even keep it close, um, they're trying to, they're probably going to, uh, try and keep it to some pretty high percentage plays. And that's generally passes to the tight end. So like the price. And I think the spot is fine. One more thing I would mention, I mean, Jets defense is the stone men at 2000, there are worse plays that you could make. Um, probably not many, but mm. they're, they're 2000. And if you need it, um, they have a good defense. So it's, yep. uh, it's, it's not the worst play in the world. They have a good defense and, and you will occasionally see, have, see the Josh Allen two fumble game or something like that. Maybe one of yep. them is run back. You have a extra chance for some sacks potentially if they end up, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I could see, I could see it at two, a 2k two flat. Uh, we haven't seen a 2k flat defense in a while. Yep. Um, uh, this will definitely be a game that I will target. It's uh, it's the the Chargers in a dome. I, I just like to play the Charger ones. The games always go a little wonky. Um, every now and then you get the weird dud in there. But, you, I mean, Keenan Allen, we'll see if he plays. If he plays, I like Keenan Allen. Um, I don't think anybody else will. I know he doesn't look good. Uh, I still will take that shot. I, I like Josh Palmer either way, assuming that he plays. And then if, if, if anybody's out, I would play DeAndre Carter. And I like Drake London, and I like Kyle Pitts a lot on the runbacks. Uh, Kyle Pitts is one of the few tight ends I'll spend over 3K for. Um, I mean, over 4K for. And uh, I think this, this sets itself up pretty nicely. You've got Eckler in a good spot, but it's, I don't know if I want to spend all of that on him. It's, it's, it's expensive, but he's incredibly productive. Um, but I like, I like, I like the uh, – I, I, I would consider both these quarterbacks and uh, 
in both game stacks. I think they're both interesting. So I, I'm I'm both sides of the game. So I, I'm I'm pretty heavily interested in the uh, the passing game here. How about you? Yeah, I like this game a little bit too. Um, I will say I like the Atlanta side a bit more. Uh, this yeah. number is sitting at Chargers laying three, and I I think that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, mm-hmm. I made it I made Atlanta the favorite of this game. So, um, I I like them quite a bit. Uh, because to your point, the Chargers just play close games. They, they you know, <laughs> every single week. Um. You know, you're going to get down to the two minute warning and it's going to be a two or three point game. Somebody's going to be playing for a field goal to win a game. So, um, you know, that said, I'm I've got some some trepidation with Keenan Allen here. Um, you know, there was some coach speak that you know, he only played the first half, only got like two targets or two catches or something last week. And there was some coach speak that said or suggested that, oh, he was fine. He was just on a snap count. Well, I think Keenan Allen himself actually came out later after the game and said, I did aggravate my hamstring again. So, okay. Um, a little worrisome there for me. I'm not sure he's going to play to be quite honest. Uh, but this was, you know, before the bye week Um, so yeah, I mean, who knows, but uh, hamstrings can definitely linger and, uh, it looks to be, you know, honestly, when he got hurt, I didn't think it was all that serious, but here we are you know, two months later and, and right. he still hasn't played. So happens um, sometimes. exactly. And at 6,500, if he's hurt, even if he does play, I would probably be really, really careful with that ownership yep. um, or with my personal ownership, even though he's not going to be owned. Uh, I'm, I'm really worried that he's going to tweak his hammy again. Uh, that said, DeAndre Carter, I think should be back. I think it was a concussion. Um, yep. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, he looks to have cleared protocol. Uh, and should be fine. I really like that at 4,300. I think that's a really good spot. Um, so if I'm getting to pass catchers, um, or did, did I say DeAndre Carter? I meant Josh Palmer. Yeah. With the, yeah, with the concussion. Palmer is coming back. Yeah, yeah. Carter, yeah, yeah. Carter's okay. Carter's good yeah, to go. Carter, should, Carter, I really do like, I mean, even if um, Keenan Allen plays, I think you can play some DeAndre Carter as well. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly if, if both Palmer and um and Keenan Allen are out then it's DeAndre Carter and it's Gerald Everett as well uh they're gonna have to throw the ball somewhere and I think that's another tight end play even though he is expensive like I wouldn't be one-offing a Gerald Everett or anything um he would really be only in stacks for me at 48 yep but I think he's I think he's playable um you know hard for me to pick him over Pitts but I got you for sure, 100%. I, I'd just rather go to Pitts. They are using him a bit more now, mm-hmm. um, now that they finally realize that he's kind of good. Um, so I do like that at 45. I'm, I'm with you. He's probably the only one I would like one off uh, as a tight end over 4,000. But I like that. Um, on the Atlanta side, like I said, I, I like them in the game, but I do like points here. And I think Marcus Mariota, he's another one of these cheaper quarterbacks, 5,300, I think you can get to. Uh, he has some upside to pop a little bit. Um, Cordero Patterson is going to be back this week, I think, at 5,800. I love playing him sub 6,000. Um, and Chargers run defense is terrible. So if you, if you want to get to some Cordero Patterson, again, it's super depressed ownership. I, I really like that play. Um, but I don't think you have to worry about ownership all that much in this game. Uh, Kyle Pitts is going to be probably the most expensive um, outside of uh, Austin Eckler on the other side, who I would also probably temper my uh, exposures to. Uh, price is just too high, I think. Um, but I do like pretty much all of Atlanta here. I like some Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and and Cordero Patterson would be my favorites. Um I also wouldn't sleep on the Atlanta defense 2,800. I think that's playable also. Agreed. Agreed with that as well. Um, I did want to throw out one more name that if you're going to make a full, like a bunch of different stacks of this game, which I'm, I'm going to do, I'll include some Demir Bird um, yep. as just a home run play. You know what I mean? Like he's actually been, you know, he had, had back-to-back weeks with a touchdown, had the 75 yarder the week before, and then last week had the other big one. So I, ju- I just, just a guy I'll, I'll incorporate because like I say, the Charger game, they, they get weird, you know? Yep. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's talk about one of the two afternoon games. The first one, Seattle, Arizona, which, uh, look, I, I am going to have a ton of Deandre Hopkins. He is the preferred target for me this week. 
Um, the, the guy who I'm spending up for, I understand if you want to go Jefferson, it's only 700 more. I think that's fine. It digs all that's fine. I I'm going to be heavy on Hopkins. And I think it may just a PPR monster. And, uh, if he gets, you know, gets one or two big plays in there, you could be looking at like 40 fantasy points from him. So I, I love Hopkins here. Um, I, I think Kenneth Walker is another one of those guys in the, in the price range that we like, uh, in a, in a good matchup. So I'm, I'm good with Kenneth Walker. Um, I don't think I'm getting to any Ertz. I, I think if they, everybody will be off Fant this week. Maybe this is the week he gets going. I, I don't know, but uh, just throwing that out there. Uh, on the uh, the rest of the uh, the Arizona for me is I, I'm not using any running backs, but it's going to be, I, I do like this game a little bit. So I don't even mind if you want to use Rondale Moore as well, but I personally will be on Hopkins and Hopkins uh, almost exclusively. And then the run back would be, you know, Lockett or Metcalf, always good with it. Uh, as with and as I am with Kenneth Walker on the other side. So a lot of pieces from this game that I have some interest in, but because they're going to have some ownership, I could also see fading it. Uh, I, I like everything except for, uh, but I, the only thing I really truly am sure that I love is the Hopkins. How about you? Yeah, I like this game too. Um, and when I was first going over the slate, I this one immediately jumped out as the one that's going to win tournaments this week. Okay. It, and I'm not sure who it's going to be. It's definitely going to involve DeAndre Hopkins, though. <laughs> like, the guy is just a monster. Uh, and, and we see what what kind of um, difference he makes to this offense, right? Yeah. They, they, they were just horrific all season. He comes back, and all of a sudden they can score points, move the football. Um, so he doesn't need to get into the end zone. But if he does, it could, like you said, it could be a, a very, very explosive day for him because he's going to get, 15 targets um pretty much every single week so uh really do like that on the seattle side um you know i like getting to gino again i think his price is a little elevated 5800 so i would kind of be careful um but he's seeing about 10 percent ownership right now up there with josh allen and aaron Rodgers. um probably not a name you would you know, you, you'd kind of balk at that when you see Gino Smith in the uh, uh, in the same sentence with those two guys. But, um, you know, the spot warrants it and their offense is pretty good, man. This is a good team over here. Um, yeah. I'm a little bit less enthused about Kenneth Walker. I think he's another one of these guys that you can play. Uh, would rather pivot down to Raheem Mostert at half of the ownership, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit cheaper, but uh, I think it's perfectly fine. And if you're getting to this game in spades, then yeah, get some Kenneth Walker uh, for sure. But I really do like both Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. I don't think their um, their prices have been hiked enough, and mm-hmm. their ownership is is still depressed. You know, Lockett at only about twelve percent, Metcalf at about nine percent. Um, mm-hmm. Metcalf looks perfectly healthy, so all systems go for me. Um, I'm going to stay off of the tight ends. I'm I'm with you. It, it's frustrating with uh, with the Noah Fant, Will Disley nonsense that they pull. Um, yep. But I, I like everybody on Seattle. Uh, and then, again, for me on Arizona, it's mostly going to be DeAndre Hopkins. But I think you might be – I'm not sure what kind of work he's going to get, but I think you might be able to start paying attention to Robbie Anderson here. Um 3,800 is the cheapest you've seen him probably in his career. It's it's warranted, right? But, uh, and I'm not sure if he's even going to be on the field. So, uh, you know, do some research. But, uh, you know, this this price really jumped out at me because he has upside at that price. Um, I would probably get to a, a little bit of the running backs um, in, in Arizona here. I, I do like some James Conner at 58. Less enthused about Eno at 59 would probably just fade that, but um, I, I do like James Conner at 58. I think there's some upside here against Seattle's defense. Uh, in the passing game, liking Rondale more as well, it looks like they're going to try and use him downfield a bit more instead of just the bubble screen nonsense. Mm-hmm. So um, really, really do like them. Um, however, I don't think you can play Zach Ertz. I'm with you there. Uh, all of his target share has just been siphoned and, and funneled back to DeAndre Hopkins now that he's back. So um, 5,100, I just don't think that's a playable price. But if you're stacking this team a lot, then then play some of him because uh, he can still pop, uh, similar to Goddard last night, right? He could still catch six balls for 100 yards and two scores or, or something like that. So um do like this game a lot. I'm uh, I'm with you. No defenses for me. 
I, I'm into the to the to the to the Seattle defense a little bit because just because you can get some sacks on Kyler, you can tip balls at the line, which could create a big play defensively, and uh, he will throw some picks. So uh, that's that's my argument for that one. Um, the Rams and Tampa Bay, what, what, what was supposed to be the, uh, the big, uh, you know, a big headline game. And, oh boy, this is like a, the loser might be out of the playoffs kind of a game. Yeah. Um, out of the playoff picture, uh, for what it's worth, I like Godwin better than Evans. He would be the guy I would use. And I always think Cooper cup is a good play. Uh, I don't, I think one of these days, Jefferson has a, has a big game. I'm not sure this is the week, uh, but I am open to all those guys. And then Tyler Higby is another one of those cheap tight ends that definitely can at times get enough usage to, to more than more in this. I mean, this is a pretty low price tag, pretty much as low as we see on him. And uh, we saw McVay come out yesterday saying that he feels like every time he runs the play, he's just wasting plays. Um, I don't know. I don't want to take any running back from the, from the Rams. I am fine with Fournette on the other side, but again, going to have some ownership and it's, it fits into that range with all those six K ish guys. And, uh, but God, Godwin probably my favorite play in this game. Godwin and uh, Higby. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to see a lot of ownership here, and I don't know, man. I got a weird feeling that this game is just going to go bonkers. Awesome. Uh, like, there's, it, it really shouldn't, right? Like, these teams have been terrible. Um, neither is anywhere near as good as, as they have been in the last couple of seasons. Yep. Uh, but they have all of the pieces still, man. And, um, you know, we're getting some some pretty good prices here on, like, Stafford, 56 um, you know, now we're talking, we're not, we're not in the mid six K's upper six K's with staff anymore. Uh, a lot of the risk, you know, the, the turnover risk, um, is, is kind of priced in now. And at 56, I think it's, it's a reasonable spot to take a punt. If Cooper cup is, is good to go. I haven't read anything in the, in the last couple of days mm. to suggest otherwise. Um, it seems like a, a low ankle sprain. I think if, uh, if I remember correctly and should be okay, but uh, 8,900 with, you know, what could be kind of a, a guy playing on one leg. Um, not super excited about that. But if I'm playing Stafford teams, um, I mean, you be damn sure that I'm, I'm playing Cooper Cup with him. So mm-hmm. uh, I think it's perfectly fine and nobody's going to play it. You know, you're going to see uh, Cooper Cup. At, yeah, it, it's a really interesting game. Uh, but also you, you have some pivotability too. You could you could easily stack up this game, even as a three-man stack. And if you if your lineups are doing great or whatever uh, after the first part of the day, maybe you want to go to the chalkier side of the Arizona Seattle. That's certainly an option. Um, so I think you have actually have some maneuverability depending on how the early game go, games go. If you do play this game, yeah, I agree. And like this, since there's only the NFL does this every once in a while, right? They just stack the morning and play two games in the afternoon or whatever. Yeah. And it, it's so ridiculous, but. This is the game that will be ignored in the afternoon. And if you want a an unowned hammer, if you want to play chalk um, with like I don't know Miami and not, I don't know if any team is necessarily going to be chalk in the morning, but um, I think it does offer some really interesting pivot spots. This game in in particular, and it could go both ways. Um, you know, if you do well in the morning, pivot to the chalk, or if uh, you need a little bit of help, then pivot to this game. Uh, because I think there's upside here uh, for the Rams in particular. Uh, I'm with you. I'm not jacked about the running game. Um, 5,100 though, pretty intriguing price for Darrell Henderson. Uh, I do think is it going to be Rams, him. Is going to be Ronnie Rivers again? I, I don't know who's going to carry the ball. Exactly. Well, we have no idea, so I would probably just stay off of it. Um, yeah. But you know, 5,100 and and one or two percent ownership is uh, is mm-hmm. you know raise my eyebrows a little bit. Um, Higby, I don't know what to do with him, man. He's still going to see a ton of ownership, and they just haven't been giving him enough. Like he had that one explosion game, and um, yeah, but he's not five thousand or fifty two hundred or whatever he right, was right. anymore. So a lot of that is priced in as well. So thirty seven hundred, another one of these guys in the three K range that uh, that you can get to. Um, Allen Robinson, if, if Cooper Cup doesn't go or any news comes out that he's hobbled, uh, I think this, it's a smash play, and he's a killer, killer late late game flex or something like that at 5000 Really, really good price. Allows you to do a ton of stuff, pretty much whatever you want with the rest of your build. Um, so I think that's very playable as well. On the Tampa side for me, I think you can play Brady. 6000 is okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
but they still throw the football more than anybody in in the league. So, um, <laughs> yeah, they're not, very, not very not very well though. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, and that's why I kind of do like Leonard Fournette, sixty six hundred. I think yep. that price tag is is going to keep some ownership off of him, but he's not getting you know rushing work all all that much anymore. It's mostly they've been getting killed. Exactly. It's mostly passing work out of the backfield. So um, if if this is a competitive high scoring game and and you're stacking it you know, for that purpose, uh, don't forget Leonard Fournette, because they'll they'll throw him the ball eight, 10 times out of the backfield uh, and he can get there just on that work. Yeah, he's alone. already so, got a 10 catch game, too. So exactly. I, I would definitely be aware of that. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm with you, though. I'm, I'm really kind of balking at Mike Evans, 7200. I just hate the price, man. Um, and a guy can't catch the damn ball. He's so frustrating, but we're going to have the tougher of the matchups here. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I would prefer Chris Godwin. Yeah. I don't want to go after, uh, Jalen Ramsey necessarily. Um, so I would prefer Brady Godwin. Uh, you could even throw in a Cameron Bright 3,100. He's another one of these super cheap tight ends who has touchdown upside. Um, I would stay off of Julio. I think he's just washed, and he's five thousand. So no, thank you. I think Cam uh, Braid is out. FYI, just just to, to, oh, is he out? I think it's going to be Otten. Yeah. Oh well, uh, Kate Otten then. <laughs> I mean, either <laughs> one. They're, they're basically basically the same guy, right? So, yep. um, yeah, I, I think this is a sneaky game. I wouldn't go crazy with it, but uh, you know, it, there's there's upside here to yep. to play these guys. Uh, you can also play the defenses, uh, both priced well and um. You know, both true. quarterbacks, you know, have, <laughs> yep. you know, been turning the ball over a little bit. So perfectly yeah. fine. Especially the Bucks defense. I kind of like against the Rams. It's weird to say. Yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, that was great. I appreciate it. Um, really good stuff. Again, everybody check out Goldie's projections. Again, the, the best in aggregate in uh, aggregate projections in the industry. Nobody else is doing this. So I really think that you can really get some use out of it. And uh, yeah, I'll be in Discord. I'll post up my put up my core plays uh, probably a little later this afternoon once we get all the injury stuff from the morning done. And uh, yeah, it should be a should be a good week. Any final thoughts before we get out of here, Goldie? No, man. We'll uh, we'll be pushing projections probably a couple of times in the next couple of days as some more news rolls out uh, toward the end of the week. So keep an eye out for that. Awesome. Sounds great. Hey, great job, man. And uh, yeah, hopefully we have a big uh, big Sunday. Good luck, everybody. Yep, good good luck, guys.